A new wrinkle in the investigation of coronavirus and its origins. How did a scientist put its genetic sequence in a database two weeks before most of us even knew it existed? We're learning some critical new details about the early stages of the pandemic and how gaps in communication between China and the rest of the world may have slowed down efforts to develop a vaccine. According to new documents shared with U.S. lawmakers this week, the genetic sequence of the coronavirus was submitted to an NIH database two weeks before the Chinese government disclosed its findings. According to those documents, a submission was first entered by a virologist from China on December 28, 2019. But a U.S. government health official says the file was incomplete, and three days later, the virologist was asked for a resubmission, which the NIH never received. It was January 11, 2020, that the World Health Organization then received its findings from China. Now, to be clear, the sequence doesn't indicate the origins of the virus, but it does undermine the Chinese government's claims about its knowledge of the pathogen. With us now is Jeremy Camille. He's a virologist and associate professor of microbiology and immunity at LSU Health Shreveport. Well, um, to be clear, there's no evidence, no good scientific evidence that this is an engineered virus at all. It looks a lot like, almost identical to coronaviruses that have been found since in bats. So we already know this is almost certainly a virus from nature that was brought into the market by wildlife trade. It's a multi-billion dollar industry in China where they bring animals from all over uh, that region to markets to be sold uh, as food and they bring them as live animals. So it really looks like a bat virus that got into some intermediate host and made it to the market that way. Um, and this sequence doesn't give you any anything new in terms of seeing that it might have been engineered or not. It's it's almost identical to sequences that were released later on January 12th. Dr. Jeremy Camille, we have to leave the conversation there. Thanks so much for your time.